schools, man. How good a job do schools do? Um, I don't think they do as good a job as they should do. Um, it's, I think, I think one of the things that, but maybe not as bad as we previously thought because um, I did have a little look at the syllabus, um, at the A-level syllabus, um, and I was slightly surprised by some of the stuff that was on there that I didn't think was on there. Um, but generally, the thing that really frustrates me is that there's two sort of major branches of physics which people do not discuss in um, at A level, which is what the kids in England do at, uh, at 17, 18, just before they come to university. What are uh, they? Relativity and quantum theory. Okay, so you, I mean, so how, so basically you do do a little bit. I was surprised to see you do do a little bit of uh, of quantum theory at A level. Um, I mean, I actually, and I actually went back and had a look at my. These are my A level uh, notes, and there is a little, little, little bit. Most of what it is here is old stuff. This is all stuff that we've known for. They're very neat notes, aren't they? All stuff that we've known for donkey's years. Oh, look, a good. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've known all this for donkey's years, right? You know, what have you got here? This is mechanics. Um, I want to see more teacher comments. All right, go up. It's not. Uh, what was your teacher saying about you? Well, most of these are like, I don't know. Let's have a look. Well, obviously, she thought I was wonderful, didn't she? Oh, yeah, another good. Okay. Oh, what is the usual method? All oh, right, I got that bit. I don't know what the usual method was. That looks a bit too experimental for me. That's probably why. Uh, 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 do you want to find some more? There's not much. There's not many teacher comments, are there? A oh, tick. Not that many. How oh, did you measure that? acceleration? You see, have you noticed how all the comments that I've got are all there because based on sort of doing experiments? Because I'm not, I'm not really experiment, experimentalist. You know, as soon as you mention the word lab, I come out in a cold sweat. I'm like the exact opposite of Phil Moriarty, but uh, <laughs> you know. But generally, there's not that many comments. Anything mathematical, I probably did all right, and anything slightly experimental, I probably wasn't that great at. But the point I wanted to make about this was, though, you know, right, so all this old, old, old stuff, been around for hundreds of years, rubbish, old, old, old. And then right at the end, you do some quantum theory, a tiny little bit of quantum theory. And it's like, you know, almost as an afterthought. And it's, there's not really anything in there either. Now I can't find it. Look, that's Feynman diagrams, then. There were no Feynman diagrams, I can assure you that. Um, oh, where is it now? Now I can't bloody find it. Um, Oh, here it is. Yeah. So a little bit of the photoelectric effect. This is about it. This is about all that we did. All right? Nothing. This is it. This is our quantum theory. It's just nothing. Yeah, there's Planck's constant. Well, we should set that to one, shouldn't we? Um, you know, so this is as far as it went for our, our quantum theory. And this really annoys me. Is this still uh, the case, though? I mean, you're an old man now. Well, that, yeah, obviously, yeah. So, well, so I had a little look, and it's pretty much still the case. Yeah, there is a little bit of quantum theory. Um, and relativity can be done as, as, a, as an option, but it's rarely chosen. And um, the reason this really, really frustrates me is because this is now established stuff. This has been around for 100 years. And what really, and it's, it's reality as well. This is, I mean, quantum theory in particular is one of the most well-tested theories there is. And uh, this is actually the way it is in nature. And I, I think what I find particularly frustrating is that it's not sort of embedded in the psyche of, of, of the sort of every man in the street. And it should be, you know, like, for example, um, you know, my brother was, was uh, we were talking about Schrodinger's cat and, uh, and he, he just sort of dismissed it as, as my ridiculous theory. And I think people sort of, oh, I wish it had been my theory, but, um, <laughs> you, know, you know, I think people sort of just think of quantum theory and relativity as being something that you don't really, this is for another world, it's something that, oh, it's too, too difficult for me, but it's not, it's, 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 it's the way it is in nature. Quantum theory is real, relativity is real, and it is important for everybody's, you know, daily lives. You know, all the computers and mobile phones are relying on certain aspects of quantum theory. You know, you drive a car, you use a sat nav, you're using relativity. And you might say, okay, well, I don't really care that much about that. But you do care about it when you're in a plane. You know, <laughs> that plane's not crashing. Thank Einstein for that, right? And I think, you know, so this is really is impacting on our daily lives now. And it will more and more and more. And people should know about it. People shouldn't fear it. And actually, I'm going to criticise ourselves for this a little bit because one of the things that, that we do um, to try and, you know, capture the imagination of the public is we talk about the weirdness of some of these theories. We've perhaps emphasised those points. You know, for example, we talk about how, uh, 
how Usain Bolt clocks a slightly different time than on his watch than on the stadium clock. And, uh, and everyone's like, whoa, what's that all about? But, you know, and maybe we emphasise too much the weird stuff because it actually, it's real. It's not weird. This is real. This is the way it is in nature. This is the way nature intends it. It's not just some made up craziness of, of some dreaming uh, scientist. It is nature. And I think there should be far more of this. And I think then if, if it was really sort of put in at, um, at, at this early stage, you know, if people who did A-level physics knew much more about quantum theory and relativity, even the ones that don't go on to study physics at university, then society would have this more embedded in their psyche. It wouldn't be so weird to talk about quantum theory. Schrodinger's cat, okay, it's strange, right? But people would have some sort of grasp of it and not just dismiss it as, well, that's nonsense, don't believe it. Well, do believe it because, you know, essentially the recent Nobel Prize was, was basically boiled down to actually managing to see sort of the Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's cat half dead and half alive actually experimentally. Okay, it wasn't really a cat, but, you know, in analogy, that's what they really did. So this is real. And I think uh, it'd be nice if people realised that, of course, one of the problems is both quantum theory and relativity, they do rely on a lot of maths. And I think it's maths more than anything else that, that people fear. And that's why, um, and certainly when we get students coming to, to, to Nottingham, uh, the one thing that they tend to struggle with is maths more than physics. And I think perhaps really it's the maths A-levels that have to improve dramatically. I think that's the real problem. I, don't, I think the maths has just got easier and easier A-level, and that needs to come up to a standard where they can really... He can really underpin these theories. But again, I, I, this, is, this is where I start getting annoyed with, with celebrities and whatnot. I was listening to Radio 1 in, uh, the other day. Nick Grimshaw, he's a Radio 1 DJ in the morning. He's taken over Chris Moyles, which, you know, I'm happy with because Chris Moyles annoys me. But, <laughs> uh, so Nick Grimshaw, but he, he was going on about, somebody said they did maths or something. And he's going, oh, maths, economics, I don't understand any of that. Oh, no, I don't understand that. Oh, it's really, really hard. And this is common. It's cool to, to be afraid of maths. And, you know, when people you know, like on the radio are going on about how cool it is to be afraid of maths, then clearly this is going to seep through society. And then teachers fear putting maths into, into their physics and uh, syllabuses because, you know, they don't want to frighten off students. But maybe we should just embrace maths. It's, it's, it's great. It's, it helps us understand how, how, the, um, how the universe works, OK? It tells us, that, you know, without maths, Essentially, what, what are you going to do? You, you literally, you know, we might as well just live in a cave. It's, it's just, so uh, this is the thing, I think, above, above all else that, that's missing at the moment. And I think the whole psyche of, uh, of society is, is sort of basically boils down to this fear of maths and this fear of, of stuff that's complicated when actually we should just embrace reality of what it is. This is quantum theory. This is relativity. They are really part of nature. Tony, just a quick question, just so that what you're saying gels okay with the other guys, because I was talking to Phil and Ed, and I said to them, is any of the modern science in there, in, in the syllabus? And they said, yeah, it is. They, were, they said, yeah, there is quantum mechanics and relativity. And you have said it's there, mm. but what I guess I want to clarify the point. Are you saying it's there, but it's not, it's there in name only? Or? Yeah, it is, yeah that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Well, you can see here, right, okay, photoelectric effect. I mean, that, you know, that's an that was an important experiment. No one's denying that. And that really sort of started the, the ball rolling in understanding quantum theory. But I asked, the, I have a friend who's a physics teacher, um, does, you know, teaches A-level physics. And I asked him, do you, know, do, you, do you actually go into anything like the wave function, this whole Schrodinger's cat business? And he says he, he, it's not part of the syllabus and he wouldn't use it as part of the syllabus because, again, he's, he's afraid of, um, of putting off people because of, of the maths. So they have a kind of fun lesson where they discuss some, some fun ideas. But again, I guess the point is, is the emphasis is on the sort of exoticness of it when really it's, we should embrace the fact it's real. It's actually real. It's not exotic. It's real. It's the way it is. And um, so, yeah, I mean, and, and the, I think the thing that, that I notice here is there's just so few equations. And I think you can't really do physics properly without without equations at the end of the day. And there's a fear of it. And I think, uh, see, there is a little bit and, uh, of, of quantum theory. Relativity, as I said, it's only really available, from what I can tell, as, as an option. And most people avoid that option and prefer to do other things instead. Tony, is it too much too soon? I know this stuff's important, but you're a professional physicist and you're steeped in this now for years. When you're a high school student and in 45 minutes you're going to be doing Shakespeare and 45 minutes after that you're going to be doing the history of the history of World War Two, is it too much to 
expect them to get into physics at the level you want them to, at this incredible level, should this just wait for university? I don't want us to think of this as being an incredible level anymore. I think that's the point. I think, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it's, so, um, it's so established now. It's been around for 100 years. It's established. People ought to know it just as much as they ought to know why a ball rolls down a hill, right? It's as established as that. Okay, maybe there will, you know, maybe, you know, the sort of, if you're not going to be a physicist or, you're, you know, you're not really going to follow the scientific route, then maybe, you know, you don't need to know all the details, but you should have a, a knowledge that that's the way nature is. That nature is, does have this behavior of, of sort of, you know, mixing states at a, at a quantum level, at, at the deep uh, level, or that time and space gets mixed up when you go to, you know, very high speeds. You should know that. I think people should know that because it's so established. Uh, a lot of what we use in society um, makes use of these ideas and people shouldn't fear it. And, they, and I think people actually don't believe it. They just sort of don't believe it, probably because, you know, in their day-to-day -day lives, they think they don't come across it. But actually, I think increasingly they do. They just don't know that they do. But <laughs> why the do they need to know it? You don't need to know how to white balance my camera or adjust the audio levels because it's not your job. You don't have to worry about that. You just have to enjoy the videos that get made. Why do people have to enjoy things at a level? Like, me understanding quantum mechanics won't help me eat or live. And I could die and never know about quantum mechanics and still live an effective life. Why do you think the people out there need to know about physics at the level, approaching a level you do? Well, no, they don't have to do it, know it at the level that, that, that sort of a professional physicist would. Clearly not. I mean, that, no, one's, no one's expecting that. Um, I just think they should... I, I would like society to, to sort of have a, not fear it, I think that's the point, I think there's a, there's a fear of it, and I don't think people should fear it, I want them to not fear it, to sort of, you know, this is it shouldn't be, we shouldn't talk about the mysterious quantum world anymore, we should talk about the world, it's the way it is, it's quantum, it's not mysterious, it's the way it is, and I think this, this sort of, you know, link between what's exotic and what's not exotic, it, 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 we should stop thinking like that anymore, and no, people don't have to know the details, I think at a level of A-level physics, when people are actually potentially going to go on to do physics at university, they should do far more quantum theory and far more relativity. They should know more about that. Um, but, you know, I, I, it's fair enough that uh, somebody who's got absolutely... N is not going to do physics in their professional lives or at any level, be it a university or, or beyond, um, clearly, you know, there's only so much they need to know. They don't really need to know anything, strictly speaking. But if we want to be in an enlightened society, and we want to know, you know, I guess as much as we want to know about Shakespeare, and that I, you know, I, I, what do I know about Shakespeare? Not a great deal, but I know a bit, okay. And I think people who read Shakespeare and are professionally into Shakespeare or whatever should know about quantum theory at the level that I know about Shakespeare and things like that. I think I think there's there's a there's there's this almost a fear. An uncoolness almost as well, and so you're not cool if you, you start trying to understand that stuff. It's too weird, it's too hard. No, it's the way it is, just as the way Shakespeare is what it is. Okay, you should we should we everybody, you know, in a truly enlightened society, you it would be it's good for people to sort of have a knowledge of, of everything.